And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, indeed. Almost there. <laughs> Almost there, yeah. It's also International Charity Day. So if you have a spare penny, then why not? Ah, it's not about how much we give, right? Uh, thanks mm. for the reminder. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get started. On Keyword News, we cover daily major headlines, and we're going to start out with a pension reform. President Yeun has proposed a first hike in pension charges in 27 years. Music to our ears, pay up more, but we need it to rectify the current pension anyway. Our first keyword of the day. Pension reform. So the government has proposed a pension reform plan that raises the contribution rate to 13 percent, leaves the income replacement rate unchanged. Uh, tell us the details of the plan. Right. So the contribution rate would be raised from 9 percent, and it's also the first increase in nearly three decades. Uh, the plan outlines a gradual implementation of the new rates with the speed of the increase tailored to different age groups. Now, the plan suggests a gradual increase in contribution rates based uh, on age. Those in the 50s will see a 1% annual increase, 40s uh, for, uh, a 0.5% increase, 30s a 0.3%, and those in their 20s will see a 0.25% uh, rise. Now, the income replacement rate would also be the same. Uh, it measures how much of a person's pre-retirement income is replaced by the pension. Currently set to decrease to 40% by 2028, the government's plan would maintain the rate at 42%. Uh, the government is also considering an automatic adjustment system that would uh, link pension payments to factors like life expectancy. Now, this system would reduce pension payments when financial risks increase, such as when expenses surpass contributions. Although this kind of system has been adopted by 24 out of 38 OECD countries, some experts worry that it may be a bit premature for Korea, especially considering the financial situation the National Pension Service um, is in. Now, the government also intends on raising the basic pension from 300,001 to 400,001 by 2026, uh, starting with low income seniors. Uh, this increase would be extended to all eligible recipients by 2027. Now, to address concerns from younger generations about the future of the pension fund, the government plans to legally guarantee pension payments. Now, currently, the National Pension Act already requires the government to ensure pension payments, but the government intends to make this guarantee clearer in the law. Uh, the government is also considering extending the mandatory enrollment age from 59 to 64, reflecting longer uh, life expectancy and more seniors staying in the workforce. That is an area that is a bit contentious and is sparking a lot of debate, uh, especially mm. in Parliament as well. So we'll have to see just how much of this planned reform actually uh, happens to come to fruition. Right, because as we mentioned, the proposal has now been handed over to the National Assembly. Uh, they'll duke it out, and after intense debate, they will arrive at some sort of agreement. That's a proposal from the president anyway. Let's move on to our second keyword of the day. Yoon visits ER. So President Yoon has made a late night visit to an emergency room promising the government support amid an ER crisis due to a staff shortage, of course. What did the president have to say? Right. So during his visit to Udongbu St. Mary's Hospital, he promised to establish a fair compensation system for essential medical services. He also encouraged the medical staff and acknowledged their hard work. He expressed regret that the government has not given enough support to emergency care, which he called a critical part of essential medical services. Uh, he noted that with the upcoming holiday season, uh, when emergency room visits increase, the government will prioritize resources uh, to prevent doctors from burning out. Now, he even mentioned the possibility of using emergency funds if necessary. Now, the hospital director explained that professors are feeling exhausted from covering from the, uh, for the missing residents, uh, which is causing more issues with patient care. Uh, he suggested that the medical system should, be, uh, should compensate based on the complexity of cases, not just uh, the number of patients. Uh, Yoon agreed, saying the current health system has not fairly addressed these difficulties, vowing improvement. Uh, the president's visit... Uh, of course, came as the government began deploying military and public health doctors to ERs across the country to kind of alleviate that staff shortage. So, um, yeah, mm. a lot of uh, it's uh, part of uh, President Yoon's plan 
to implement his healthcare reform as well. That's part of the reason why he's visited this uh, ER. But uh, yeah, it's facing still a lot of backlash uh, from uh, medical from the medical community. Because there is no quick resolution, is there? And meanwhile, Chuzak is approaching us really quickly. And the government's plan is to strengthen uh, the staff, at least from what we have right now. Uh, we'll wait and see what, what is realized there. Let's move on to our third keyword of the day. New Zealand's meeting. So President Yoon has met with New Zealand Prime Minister Christopher Luxer, who is uh, on his first trip to Korea since taking office in November last year. Uh, what did they discuss? Right. So it's also actually the first time in nine years that a New Zealand prime minister has visited Korea for bilateral talks. Uh, the two leaders agreed to enhance security cooperation. They also agreed to advance discussions to upgrade their bilateral relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership. They agreed to enhance cooperation in key areas such as economy, uh, defense and education. They also place to work together on regional and global issues as well. Now, both leaders condemned North Korea's ongoing nuclear and missile activities, as well as its military ties with Russia. They agreed to cooperate on denuclearizing North Korea and improving human rights in that country. Uh, Luxton also supported Seoul's efforts for peace and unification on the Korean peninsula. Uh, the two leaders condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine and stressed the importance of maintaining peace in the Taiwan Strait. Uh, and they also expressed concern over growing conflicts in the Middle East. Now, Yoon praised New Zealand for its efforts in monitoring North Korea's violations of UN sanctions and its contributions to the UN command for peace on the Korean Peninsula. New Zealand, of course, is a member of that UN command. Uh, in June, New Zealand announced plans to increase its troop presence in the UNC from 12 to 53 soldiers in support of peace efforts. Uh, the navies of the two countries also conducted drills uh, in June as well. Now, both leaders noted that trade between the two countries has nearly doubled in the past years, uh, past uh, 10 years, excuse me. They agreed to explore opportunities to further enhance the trade deal between them. They also want to launch an economic security dialogue channel to facilitate uh, regular discussions on the economic cooperation as well. All right, with that, I move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Nuclear plant deal. So Czech National Security Advisor Tomá Poyar has met with President Yoon, assuring him that his country would finalize a contract with Korea for the construction of, of course, a Dukanov, uh, excuse me, Dukovani nuclear power plant. Run us through what was discussed. Right. So Poyar explained that his visit to Korea aimed to prepare for Yoon's upcoming visit to the Czech Republic this month. He assured that Prague would be able would make every effort to ensure that Yoon's upcoming visit would significantly strengthened by national relations. Uh, Poyo's visit to Korea comes as uh, after, rather, U.S. nuclear company Westinghouse Electric filed an appeal with Prague last month, uh, protesting uh, Korea's selection as the preferred bidder for the Dukovani project. Uh, Czech antitrust authorities have actually started procedures to review complaints, not only from Westinghouse, but also France's Electricité de France. Now, Poyo also mentioned that the Czech government seeks to strengthen comprehensive cooperation with Korea, not only in nuclear energy, but also in industries such as investment, defense and transportation. Yoon said he will make sure to provide full support to ensure the nuclear project's success. Uh, he also asked for Poyar's cooperation in expanding mutually beneficial cooperation. And he also said he aims to further advance the strategic partnership between the two countries during his upcoming trip. All right, and with that, I move on to our final keyword of the day. U.S. activity slows. So the U.S. Fed's Beige Book reports there has been an increase in a number of regions where economic activity has either stagnated or declined in the country, uh, meaning that the Fed's uh, impending rate cut might be realized within this month, perhaps. So tell us the details. Right. So nine of the 12 districts covered by the Fed saw little or no change in economic activity. That's a rise from five districts in the previous uh, July reports. Now, the remaining three districts showed slight growth. Uh, the Fed noted that employers were cautious about hiring due to concerns over demand and uncertainty about the economic outlook. As a result, businesses were less likely to expand their workforce. 
Uh, if we look at the government data, the US job market showed no signs of slowing in July, with job openings falling to their lowest level in over three years. Now, despite reports last week suggesting that the US economy grew at a solid 3% annual rate in the second quarter, the job market hasn't seen the same momentum. Now, uh, for those wondering what the Beige Book actually is, it is a summary of economic conditions through surveys and interviews with businesses and banks and experts. Uh, it is uh, typically released two weeks before the FOMC meeting, mm -hmm. where monetary policy decisions are made. Now, a rate cut is expected in the next meeting, but with the falling job market, a cut uh, could be delayed. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, for the time being, the job market uh, data doesn't really seem that promising at the moment. Mm. Uh, and so um, there are expectations uh, of a rate cut happening, but we'll just have to see what the updated job market figures and data looks like before the Fed will refer to them. Uh, to see if uh, a rate cut is warranted. All right. And it's the timing of it and it's the scale of it too. Will it be a big step or a baby, baby step? It's probably the latter. And then we'll have to wait mm. for the BOK's decision. Sometimes uh, our listeners ask, why, why are we keeping such close tabs on the Fed's rate cuts timing? And it's because, well, most of, I think, the global economy looks to the Fed's decision to make their subsequent decisions. Yeah, it's often seen as kind of a, a benchmark yeah. or some uh, a key reference point. Uh, Korea, of course, uh, as well, takes a closer look at the Fed's rate. If it becomes too wide, the differences the in the interest rate uh, gaps, that means uh, uh, a lot of uh, repercussions in terms of uh, trade and the currencies as well, and a lot of uh, economic transactions or financial transactions uh, between the two countries. Uh, and, of course, uh, at the moment, it is considered quite wide. So... Mm. Uh, the Bank of Korea will certainly be looking for a rate cut uh, in the Fed uh, to probably follow suit. But of course, we'll have to see. Thank you so much, Aaron, for today's coverage. And you said it's International Charity Day, right? Yeah. Um, I guess I should mark the occasion. <laughs> Apparently, it started uh, in Hungary to commemorate Mother Teresa's uh, death. So huh. if you're feeling uh, giving... <laughs> As you Why should. Not? Is that a phrase? I don't know. A little bit of benevolence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're feeling generous, then go ahead. Thank yeah. you. Very and even the smallest contributions count. So why not? It goes a long way. Thank you very much, Adam. We'll speak to you again tomorrow. You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.